Welcome and thank you for joining us for another online program from the Adams County Historical Society. My name is Antigone Ladd and I serve on the board here and I enjoy very much being part of the programming and the activities of this wonderful historical society. We thank all of you for joining us. We are delighted that thousands of people are joining our online programs more than we were ever able to fit into the meeting space here in Gettysburg. If you would like to help us continue our online programs, I would encourage any donation of any size, which you can make easily online. There's a red button at the bottom of your screen. Hit the button, it's safe and secure, and you will keep the programs rolling and send us your ideas for topics you would like to hear. Our speaker this evening is Howard Burrell. Howard is the treasurer of the Adams County Historical Society, and he serves on the board. In his full-time career, Howard served for 43 years as a clergyman with the Western Pennsylvania Conference of the United Methodist Church. In his retirement, he moved to Gettysburg. He took up volunteering with the Gettysburg Foundation, working with the Historical Society, where he is writing, where he is speaking, designing programs. The man never stops. I think you will enjoy his topic this evening on the railroads of Adams County. It's a topic I've personally been interested in for many years, and the more Howard talked in doing this presentation, the more I wanted to learn. So if you enjoy his program, maybe you can talk him into doing a little more about some of the specific railroads. So with that, let me turn the program over to Howard and ask him to introduce himself by telling us how he happened to move to Gettysburg. Howard, it's all yours. Thank you. I spent my career in Western Pennsylvania and retired in 2011. Carol and I wanted to move closer to our daughter who lives with her family in Annapolis, Maryland. And so we started looking in central Pennsylvania for places to live and we settled upon Gettysburg. Gettysburg has some connection to our family on both my side and Carolyn's side of the family. Carolyn's great great grandfather was a member of the 140th Pennsylvania and fought here at Gettysburg. And my grand, great grandfather was the uh, uh, member of the 14th Pennsylvania Cavalry. They weren't here at Gettysburg, but they did fight in Maryland and Monocacy and in the Shenandoah Valley. So we have connections here historically. On my mother's side, my great great grandfather was from Chambersburg, and he lived in Artsville during the Battle of Gettysburg. And his son is my grandfather. His name was also Howard. Uh, he worked on the Pennsylvania Railroad, and that's sort of my connection to railroads. I took an interest in, in his work. Uh, although I never met him, he passed away before I was born. I learned from my mother a lot of the things that he did as a brakeman on the Pennsylvania Railroad. Here's a slide I'd like to show you of my grandfather, who's standing in the middle between the engineer and the, the brakeman. My grandfather was a fireman on this locomotive. This is the train crew. The man on the far left is my uh, grandfather's brother. This train was stationed in Pittsburgh on the Pennsylvania Railroad. It is a locomotive manufactured in Altoona, Pennsylvania. And uh, this slide is from the early 1920s. The locomotive was a coal burner. It had a top speed of 17 miles an hour, and it would run at that speed for one hour, but it would take six tons of coal to, to make that train go at 17 miles an hour for one hour. So. That's a fascinating history of the trains that uh, I've carried with me all my life. I never got to meet my grandfather because he passed away before I was born. But my mother told me the stories that he told her of the of the railroad. And that, that got my interest in, in railroads. And uh, coming to Adams County to live, there's a tremendous railroad history here. And I want to talk a little bit about that in this program. I want to take the time to uh, remind you to visit the Adams County Historical Society. On your screen, you'll be able to see the web address. We hope you visit there and take a look at all of the things that the uh, Adams County Historical Society has to offer. Before I begin my program, I want to take a second to thank Maria Lynn, who is the Assistant Collections Manager at the Adams County Historical Society, for helping to pull many of the photographs uh, that you will be seeing during this program. Many of these photographs are 100 or more years old, 
And it's very important that uh, you realize that the Adams County Historical Society has thousands of these photographs that you can preview um, at our website at the address online. Today, we're going to be talking about Gettysburg Adams County train stations, pictured as the uh, Lincoln train station in downtown Gettysburg on Carlisle Street. Uh, we'll be talking about that station and many others. Uh, we hope you enjoy the photographs that we are going to show you and some of the stories that we'll be telling you. Before we get into the train stations themselves, I want to talk about the fact that railroads became an important part of American history. In the late 18th and early 19th century, if you wanted to travel more than a few miles from your home, you were restricted by rivers and uh, trails and primitive roads. And if you were close enough to a, a town that was on a waterway, you could travel by canals. But there was very little opportunity to travel inland uh, if you lived in the interior or if you lived in extremely rural areas. There was a need to travel and explore beyond one's place of origin. Uh, people were just curious and wanted to go beyond what they could reach within a, a few hours of walking or riding a horse. People needed to connect with people far away from their place of origin. And as the nation grew, there was a need to sell goods beyond where they were grown or produced. And there was a need in the late uh, 18th and early 19th century to unite a growing nation. It was railroads that fulfilled those needs. Early beginnings of railroads came out of towns that uh, would use uh, a coach drawn by a horse on tracks that often were made of wood, sometimes made of iron as time went by. Uh, the idea came up that we should connect towns by rail, find a means of getting from place to place without having a horse pull a bunch of people in a railroad car. So in February of 1827, the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad became the first United States railway chartered for commercial transport of passengers and freight. As you can see in this picture, picture of the locomotive, which they called Tom Thumb by Peter Cooper. Um, this was the first uh, commercial locomotive attached to a, a, a train that was actually going from one part of the city of Baltimore, and they envisioned actually going to Ohio from Baltimore by, by rail. Of course, that dream had to wait a few years and, and for the development of the locomotive. One person from our area in Adams County was Thaddeus Stevens, who wanted to produce a railroad to go from Gettysburg towards Maryland and down to the Potomac River where there was a canal. Thaddeus Stevens was born in Vermont in 1792. He wasn't from Gettysburg or Adams County originally, but he moved to Gettysburg as a young man and opened a law practice in town in 1816. He had many business ventures. He was an entrepreneur for sure, and uh, not just a lawyer. And in 1839, he became financially involved in the proposed Gettysburg Railroad. 1839 railroads were uh, coming into their own, and Thaddeus Stevens wanted to be a part of it, and he envisioned a railroad going west out of Gettysburg. And they proposed a Gettysburg Railroad in 1839 that would run from Gettysburg, as you can see on the right side of your screen, all the way over to Maryland. And this particular drawing shows it uh, terminating near Clear Springs, Maryland, and the Chesapeake and Ohio Canal along the Potomac River. A lot of mountains had to be crossed, as you can see at the bottom of this map, the elevations from Gettysburg all the way to the terminus included going across some mountains. To get across the mountains, they didn't dig tunnels, but they would do switchbacks. This became known as the Tapeworm Railroad by its critics because it had so many switchbacks on it, it looked like uh, apparently a tapeworm to them. Construction began, but it was never completed. The Commonwealth of Pennsylvania uh, provided right-of-ways for the Tapeworm Railroad, and they were later used by the Susquehanna, Gettysburg, and Potomac Railroad, and also by the Baltimore and Harrisburg Railway. They were used later to build a line from Gettysburg to Highfield, Maryland. But because of so many switchbacks on this proposed 1839 Gettysburg Railroad, 
you had to travel 35 miles to go a distance of just 18 miles. They realized it was an engineering feat that would be very costly. And so Thaddeus Stevens and his friends ran out of money and ran out of political support. And this particular railroad was never built. Early independent railroads such as these and the right-of-ways that they produced were uh, eventually all absorbed by the Western Maryland Railroad by 1917. However, uh, as you can see in this particular uh, slide, that there is an existing stone viaduct on Iron Springs Road uh, outside of Fairfield, Pennsylvania, um, that was going to be part of this uh, railroad uh, running from Gettysburg all the way to the Potomac River uh, and the Ohio Canal. Um, the railroad was never built, but some of the viaducts were, and, and a few remnants of these viaducts and some of the other structures in the right-of-ways can still be seen today if you uh, research and look for them and uh, explore them. The Gettysburg Railroad Station was built in 1851, um, or rather it was conceived in 1851, when three local Gettysburg businessmen, Robert McCurdy and Josiah Benner and Henry Myers, obtained a charter from the Commonwealth to create the Gettysburg Railroad Company. And they didn't go west with their line, they went east. They went east from Gettysburg to Hanover Junction in York County, a distance of about 29 miles. And uh, the charter in 1851 enabled them to obtain right-of-ways and travel that distance, putting in the rails, completed in 1859. And this is what the railroad station looked like. It was completed in 1859. And uh, in May, a two-story station in, the Get in Gettysburg opened. And when this station, which is still there today, of course, and when it opened, it had a cupola and a new brass bell on top to announce the arrivals and departures of, uh, of trains. And now, just four years later, after this station was built, the Battle of Gettysburg took place and raged all around it. The town was, of course, taken over by the Confederates, but the building remained unharmed and served as a Confederate hospital. The rail line was out of service, however, just out of town, a short a distance out of town when Confederates, the Confederates of Jubal Early's division burned the railroad bridge over Rock Creek. And this is uh, just on the outside of town where Route 30 crosses on the York Road, Route 30 crosses the Rock Creek. While the bridge was burning, the Confederates put 17 railroad freight cars into the burning bridge. Uh, it, it was said to be quite a conflagration. Uh, but it didn't take long for uh, the bridge to be rebuilt and function again after the battle. And the station was then used to bring supplies into Gettysburg by the uh, Christian Commission and the Sanitary Commission and to move wounded soldiers out. It became a very important transportation hub in Gettysburg, of course. This is an interesting slide to me. It shows the Gettysburg train station in the background with the cupola and the brass bell hanging in it. Uh, a late uh, 19th century photograph, not dated. But the train crew uh, posing for their picture uh, with what a locomotive that would be typical of the time. The train carried both freight and passengers, and you can see some freight being loaded onto the uh, freight car right behind the, the tender and the uh, passenger cars behind that. Uh, that would unload at the train station. Uh, but it's a, it's a great picture of a, a 19th century locomotive and the, and the crew that ran it. At the train station, Abraham Lincoln arrived, of course, in the November of 1863 to deliver some appropriate remarks at the dedication of the Soldiers National Cemetery. He arrived at the train station, and we know the story of him uh, delivering the Gettysburg Address and departing the next day from the train station. However, there were no photographs of him uh, either at the train station and one that was taken from a distance at the uh, National Cemetery, taken by, an, uh, I believe, an assistant of Matthew Brady, because Matthew Brady at the time was in New York, I believe. Here's a picture of the train station today. Just a few years ago, it was uh, repainted to its original color and uh, it still proudly stands as uh, a beautiful monument to the era and a, a great attraction for the city of Getty, uh, Gettysburg. The actual ownership of the station transferred to the borough of Gettysburg in 
1998 from a, a railroad company that no longer wanted to run it. And in 2013, the Gettysburg Foundation purchased it from the borough. And in 2014, the United States Congress legislated a declaration that the train station uh, would be within the boundary of the Gettysburg National Park. So that made it a possession of the uh, National Park Service. But today, the Gettysburg Foundation operates, owns and operates the station as a national historic site. The railroad tracks that run beside it are the CSX tracks. Uh, CSX is the one of the largest uh, railroad uh, corporations in the east of the Mississippi, and it has 21,000 miles of track, uh, a pair of which runs right through Gettysburg. I want to move now to uh, the railroads of Adams County. The slide we have here is a railroad map of Adams County uh, drawn in 1895. And as you can see, the main lines run from Gettysburg north, and that's the Philadelphia and Reading Railroad tracks. And you can see this the stops on this track. Um, <clears throat> Goldenville, Table Rock, Biglerville, Sunnyside, and, and Bendersville, and so on, Gardeners, Aspers, uh, all the way through to the northern part of the county. And then this track, which runs east and west, actually southwest, east to Gettysburg, and then further east to Hanover Junction in York County, uh, is owned and was owned and operated in 1895 by the Western Maryland uh, Railroad. <clears throat> Notice this little spur here. Uh, in 1895, the uh, Gettysburg-Harrisburg uh, Railroad had a spur that ran from Gettysburg out to Little Round Top. It was an excursion uh, line. But notice all the little railroad stations all along these tracks. It actually connected the county uh, east and west and north and south to Gettysburg. Um, down in this area, no railroads. Um, it was uh, important so Gettysburg could connect from near the center of the county uh, to the other uh, counties uh, nearby. And so what we want to talk about now are the railroad stations that we pointed out on the map previously. Uh, some of these stations are quite historic, quite nostalgic, and uh, were photographed. And these photographs that you'll be seeing, many of them come from the collection of the Adams County Historical Society. Extremely valuable uh, photographs that uh, are actually irreplaceable. But I want to start off with uh, a couple of these stations to, to show you. Uh, this one is the Aspers Station, actually Bendersville Aspers Station. Uh, notice it's uh, right along the railroad track, folks standing there. Uh, this was a center of town. It was an important uh, stop along the, the track. And these railroad stations that you'll be seeing are important centers of town because here's where the mail came in. Uh, you would get mail a couple of times a week by train, uh, which really speeded up uh, connections to the outside world. It was a place oftentimes where telegraphs were located for these small towns to connect them to the rest of the world. Uh, people would uh, arrive and depart and ship their produce, and especially in Adams County, the fruit farms uh, were, were uh, just being able to export their produce to places they couldn't before the railroads came in. Uh, unfortunately, this railroad station is no longer there, uh, the Bendersville Asper Station. Here's another station. This is at McKnightstown. If you're going from Gettysburg to Cashtown, you'll go through uh, McKnightstown if you want to exit uh, before the big intersection with the flashing yellow light. You can turn left and go through McKnightstown and, and then go into Cashtown. But McKnightstown Station, as you can see at the bottom, that, that photograph is uh, courtesy of the Western Maryland Historical Society. Uh, you'll see that it's now a private residence. Some of these train stations survived because uh, when they were no longer needed as a station, they could be transferred or um, remodeled into private homes or into businesses. And fortunately, that train station still exists, but it's a private home right along the tracks. Here's the Ortana station. The Ortana station was actually in the center of, at that particular time, uh, 19th century, uh, of a little town. Um, Ortana is an area today, uh, has a, a little bit of a town, but the station is no longer there. Uh, it was one of the ones that were, were lost uh, to the ages. 
but again, at least we have a photograph of it. And here's a station in Fairfield. Uh, the Fairfield station is no longer there, unfortunately, but it, uh, it was an important uh, center of uh, communications with the outside world. Notice the telegraph lines running nearby. Uh, but unfortunately, the, uh, the station and the, uh, uh, the warehouse beside it uh, is now gone. I like this station because it's got some pictures of some people in it. And this uh, picture was taken on 4th of July, 1913. Uh, it's the Biglerville station. Uh, these gentlemen perhaps are waiting for a train to, to go to Gettysburg to observe the festivities of the 50th anniversary of the Battle of Gettysburg. That's speculation. They just may have been standing there to have their picture taken. But anyway, you can see a, a railroad employee here and uh, the other gentlemen uh, all in their uh, finery and their hats at the railroad station in Biglerville, 1913. The Biglerville station, a picture of then and now, this is a, a an old picture, uh, a long shot of the station, but it is still there. And fortunately, it had been remodeled into uh, a business over the years. But I believe right now, currently, it is uh, is currently vacant. But at least it still exists, and we haven't lost it. And here's the East Berlin station. It's an interesting station because it had buildings on both sides of the tracks. Now the tracks are gone, as you can see. the, the road is there where the tracks used to be. But in East Berlin, at the southern corner of 3rd and Locust Streets, there was the 3rd Street Station. It's currently a business. It's uh, fortunately uh, still with us. But across the street is the East Berlin Station on the northern side of 3rd and Locust Streets. This too is currently a business. It's an apartment building. This lower picture you can see uh, it was taken in 1875. The tracks were still there and uh, it was uh, the railroad depot in East Berlin. So the railroad tracks ran between uh, the northern side and the southern side of uh, 3rd Street in East Berlin, and we have uh, both uh, preserved uh, today. This is the Gardner's Station. The Gardner's Station was built in 1912, so it's a 20th century railroad station. It was built by the, the Reading Railroad. Um, it is preserved. This is a uh, slide that shows then and now at the bottom you can see the old station um, you can see it being uh, reconstructed in about 2003 and uh, it's today a business and uh, it's preserved and we're glad to see that we have another Adams County Railroad station preserved for posterity here is Peach Glen people may want to know where Peach Glen is well Peach Glen is located near Gardner's and Mount Holly Springs. It's a rural community, uh, but this station, small as it is, and it was, of course, a small town back in the railroad heyday, uh, but it is no longer there. But we do have it preserved in a photograph. It's a very small station, uh, but nonetheless, it was a, an important part of that little settlement of Peach Glen. And I'm sure the people who may live in that area today, maybe some of them remember this. Uh, old station that uh, that is now gone. Um, sadly, so many of these small stations and the rural stops, uh, rural depots, they're gone today because they could serve uh, no useful purpose. Uh, and so communities uh, uh, let them uh, slip away. Here's a Littlestown station. <clears throat> you would think Littlestown would still have its railroad station, but it doesn't, unfortunately. Littlestown Railroad Station uh, was a thriving part of town. As you can see, the uh, lower right-hand corner, the picture there of the people all dressed up, perhaps uh, waiting for the train uh, to arrive or uh, gathering after it departed the station. Uh, we don't know what this uh, slide is about, but we can see people were all dressed up in that, the railroad station that day. Um, the Littlestown Railway Express Agency building was uh, uh, at that particular site. But unfortunately, even though it did last into the 20th century, it fell into disrepair and has been removed. So it's uh, no longer there. The new Oxford station, however, had a different fate. It is still there and it's today a, a railroad museum. It is a very significant uh, railroad station in the terms of uh, Adams County history. Uh, it was built in 1892 by the Western Maryland Railroad. Uh, and if you go into uh, 
New Oxford today, as you go uh, across uh, the railroad tracks, before you get into town, if you're traveling from Gettysburg, you'll see a little red caboose uh, right beside this station. And you'll see the station completely restored to a beautiful train museum. So it's a great place to stop by and learn more about the local trains here in uh, Adams County. We're glad that's been preserved the way it is. I want to move on now to Hanover Junction. And even though Hanover Junction is across the Adams County border in York County, it has significant historical ties to Adams County. Now, first of all, I want to point out that this is, a, this is the a Hanover Junction Station, um, and it has a, a picture of a locomotive and its crew and some little kids there off to the left and some young fellows sitting on the cow catcher of the uh, locomotive. And this locomotive is what's known as a camelback locomotive. A uh, camelback locomotive is uh, so designated because it has the drive cab astride the boiler. And this photo is undated probably mid to later 19th century. These types of locomotives were very popular in the mid-19th century, uh, but it made it very difficult for the engineer to look back at the train because of the position of the cab. It was, uh, again, the cab was right over the boiler. You can imagine only how hot it must have been in there uh, to drive a camelback locomotive in those days. But here's a little more information about <clears throat> the Hanover Junction train station. You can see the tracks uh, connecting to different railroads. And this particular junction is where Abraham Lincoln stopped on the 18th of November, 1863, to come to Gettysburg to deliver his uh, address at the dedication of the Soldiers National Cemetery. Now, this photograph was taken by assistance of Matthew Brady. As I said earlier, he was probably in New York at the time, and he didn't attend the ceremonies for the dedication himself, but he sent two assistants. And these photographers went to Hanover Junction the day before. As you can see on the platform, there's a lot of people. Speculation has it that these people were waiting for a train to transfer to Gettysburg and then stay overnight in Gettysburg for the festivities of the dedication of the uh, Soldiers National Cemetery. Some 20,000 people attended that dedication. And of course, all the ones from out, out of town, 99% of them probably arrived by train. This particular engine is also a camelback engine, and you can see two men standing on top of it. And there's a very curious type of uh, event that occurred there that was photographed, and I'm going to show it to you in this next slide. This particular photograph is one of great controversy over the years. As we know, Lincoln transferred trains at Hanover Junction, or at least was on a train that uh, had to switch over to a new locomotive. And we're not sure whether or not he got off the train. Some say he did and some say he didn't. But this photograph has always been cause for speculation. As you see in the center, there's a tall man with a stovepipe hat and a beard. Uh, people say that's Abraham Lincoln. Well, there's no proof that there is. No proof exists, rather, that this is Abraham Lincoln. But it's a it's always fun to have Lincoln sightings and photographs from um, 1863. And this was taken at Hanover Junction on, on November 18th, 1863, just one day before the dedication of the cemetery. Again, more people standing on the platform waiting for a train and uh, the tall man with a stovepipe hat and a beard. Could it be Abraham Lincoln? Some say yes, some say no. There's no sure way to tell, but it's always fun to speculate. This is the Hanover Junction today. As you can see, it uh, looks very similar to the way it did back in 1863. It was built uh, between 50, 1852 and 1854. It's currently preserved as a museum, thankfully. It's still there. And it's a rest stop on the York County Heritage Rail Trail. So if you want to ride a bicycle or hike the rail trail, you, have a, you can stop at Hanover Junction, uh, just like Abraham Lincoln. Now, we have a, a second train station built in Gettysburg, and this was built later in the 19th century in 1884. This was built by a competitor a railroad company. The Gettysburg-Harrisburg Railroad built this station, and it is still there today. 
at the corner of West Washington and North Railroad Street. It's about a block and a half from the Lincoln train station, which of course is uh, several decades older. This railroad was taken over by the Reading Railroad in 1891 and later by, again, the Western Maryland Railroad, which uh, took up many of these smaller stations and railroads in Adams County. We could do a whole program on just what the older railroads were and their acquisitions and mergers. Uh, it's a very long and uh, storied history. But this railroad station was a very, very active station, and it was in existence uh, in 1884, and it was used for the 50th anniversary a celebration of the Battle of Gettysburg and also the 75th anniversary. And you can see the sign, hard to read, but it says Gettysburg Harrisburg Railroad on the on the sign. And it is still there today. Here's another photograph of it. This particular railroad station was used uh, well into the 20th century by excursion trains. You could get on a train at this station. You could go north to the northern part of the county, get off the train, have dinner, get back on again, and come back to Gettysburg. And these excursion trains ran all the way into the 1990s out of this particular station. And there you see a old locomotive, probably early 20th century, uh, would be my guess for this picture. This railroad station, uh, when the railroad, of course, uh, went out, the station was converted into a restaurant. The first restaurant there was the Whistle Stop. And when it went out of business, Tommy Cranius uh, took over and uh, he opened his first pizza shop in Gettysburg, Tommy's Pizza. His, his uncle was Ernie. Uh, Ernie brought Tommy to the United States and uh, Ernie's Texas lunch is a still um, going concern here in Gettysburg. And Tommy's Pizza and Ernie's Texas lunch is run by the Grand sons of these gentlemen. But the railroad station was the first place that uh, Tommy opened his pizza shop. And you can even see in the left-hand corner there a little bit, he had outdoor seating. So he was quite an entrepreneur himself. Now we want to talk for a few minutes about notable visitors to Gettysburg who came by rail in the 20th century. And we want to start off with this particular slide, which I think is quite unique. It's from the a collection of the Adams County Historical Society. What we have here is President William Howard Taft visiting Gettysburg in June of 1909 to dedicate a monument on the battlefield to the U.S. regulars. Interesting camera angle, I thought. This camera must have been sitting on the ground and tilted upwards to take a picture of uh, President Taft as well as the uh, the train station above him. Uh, he's standing on the back of his rail car, as presidents in those days did, and uh, he's addressing the crowd as he came into the station. So it's quite a unique picture from the archives of the Historical Society. We move up a few years now to uh, 1912. This is May 1912. This is President Teddy Roosevelt visiting Gettysburg. And he, again, like uh, President Taft before, was standing on the back of a uh, his train, and he's coming to town to speak at the Memorial Day observances in May of 1912. He was he was here prior to that when he was running for election, but he uh, he came as president in 1912. And um, in those days, uh, the Memorial Day celebrations often drew dignitaries of, of the national level and sometimes presidents coming to Gettysburg to uh, to speak at the National Cemetery for those uh, Memorial Day observances. Notice all the people in the foreground, um, local dignitaries and politicians wanting to get their picture taken with the president. And I, I thought it was quite unique to see the lady down there in the, in the front row. She was here to greet the president, but at that time she couldn't vote for him because women didn't have the right to vote at that time. And now just a, a year later, in 1913, came the 50th reunion of the Battle of Gettysburg. And here we have a picture again from the archives of the Adams County Historical Society. The veterans train arriving at Gettysburg. Uh, notice the, uh, the the veterans in the windows, looking out the windows, and uh, some of them down the line waving. Uh, I often thought when I looked at this picture, uh, how these men who fought in the Civil War saw the evolution of the railroad from uh, primitive uh, steam locomotives to uh, 
to that time in 1913, more modern, uh, technologically advanced uh, rail cars, as you can see them uh, connected with, uh, looks like they might even have some air brakes on them at that particular time, I'm not sure. But uh, uh, these men saw the evolution of transportation in terms of the railroads, as many people who were born in the early part of the 20th century could see the evolution of uh, air travel from uh, primitive airplanes up to uh, supersonic jumbo jets. So these gentlemen on the train saw quite a bit of, of evolution. And here they are arriving in Gettysburg for the observance of the 50th reunion of the Battle of Gettysburg. <clears throat> these men are getting off the train at the, uh, at the depot, uh, Lincoln train station. And uh, the celebration went from June 29th to July the 4th, 1913. And there were 53,407 veterans of the Civil War attending. Now, of course, they all didn't fight at, the, at Gettysburg, but this reunion was open to any veteran of the Civil War. And of that 53,400, 8,750 of them were Confederate veterans. So you had these men coming back together, some of them meeting soldiers from the opposite side for the first time in their lives. But there you can see quite a few of them. Uh, detraining and coming to Gettysburg for this spectacular 50th anniversary. And the speaker, featured speaker for the 50th anniversary was President Woodrow Wilson. Um, he was arriving by train and he spoke on July 4th, 1913, to the largest gathering of Civil War veterans um, yet to, to up to that particular time. You can see him here uh, with uh, some uh, gentlemen that accompanied him by train. And here we have now veterans after the celebration um, and after the uh, reunion are getting back on the train to go home. Many of these men were in their 70s at this time, late 60s, uh, early 70s, uh, but they were determined to come to Gettysburg to, to uh, meet with their fellow veterans and, uh, and mark the occasion. And uh, it's great to have these photographs of them uh, at this particular point, getting back on the train in order to go home again. And many of them would never, never return, but uh, they were here for at least the 50th anniversary to commemorate uh, the event. Great picture, I thought. We move ahead now from 1913 to 1918. This is Camp Colt. Uh, this is a, picture of a railroad tracks going through Camp Colt. It's the round top branch of the Gettysburg and Harrisburg Railroad. It ran through uh, the fields of Pickett's Charge uh, to Little Round Top. And here you see Camp Colt in all of its uh, splendor. Uh, it's overseen by a young lieutenant coming out of West Point. Um, Dwight David Eisenhower was, of course, the uh, commandant of Camp Colt. If you look closely in the upper left-hand corner in the background of this photograph, <clears throat> you'll see the state of Vermont and the Pennsylvania monuments. Um, it gives you a, a, an orientation. Uh, this picture was taken uh, facing uh, southwest from the uh, fields of Pickett's Charge. It's quite an interesting picture. Um, certainly um, can't imagine what uh, this camp looked like when you look at the, uh, the fields today that are restored to 1863 conditions. But this camp was not far from the uh, Henry Spangler farm that is uh, still on uh, battlefield today. Now we move again further into the 20th century and we are in 1928, 10 years later, and President Calvin Coolidge arrives in Gettysburg, again, standing on the back of the presidential train um, to come and speak at the Memorial Day services observances in May of 1928. Um, he was greeted by a great crowd of people. Uh, notice the train station there and, and uh, the uh, police. Uh, he's not the only mounted police officer who came to uh, greet the president. We had a whole lot of uh, mounted police um, greeting uh, President Calvin Coolidge and his wife as they came off the train. You can see the train station there all decorated all the way from the cupola all the way down to the ground floor. And uh, of course, it's, I find it interesting too to, to see some of the local signs, the one on the left, Thompson's Restaurant and Comfort Station, uh, right there uh, near, the, near the train station. But uh, quite a few mounted police 
came to escort the president to the National Cemetery for him to deliver his Memorial Day address. And if we want to move ahead another 10 years, we now have the 75th reunion of the Battle of Gettysburg. And in 1938, we have President Franklin D. Roosevelt arriving at the train station uh, in Gettysburg. And um, you see around him uh, Secret Service agents. They're well-dressed and trying to look inconspicuous, obviously, but uh, not succeeding at that. But at least they're guarding the president as he arrives, departed the train, and uh, got on his uh, way to, uh, to the festivities. Now, I don't believe President Roosevelt stayed in Gettysburg. I believe he stayed in Artsville for the dedication of the Peace Light Memorial and to address the veterans who were gathered. The uh, next slide shows some uh, police cadets and wheelchairs because they're here to await the veterans. There were 25 veterans of the Battle of Gettysburg that attended 75 years after the battle. Just 25 of them were well enough to attend, but there were also 1,359 other Union veterans and 486 Confederate veterans attended the 75th reunion. And the average age for these gentlemen was 94. And here we see one of those veterans with his wife. This is veteran Austin Cutler, age 92, and his wife, Maud. Um, they are arriving from Indiana to attend the festivities. Uh, local Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts aided the veterans during their stay, and, and there are a few of those scouts that are still living in Gettysburg today. They're in their 90s. They remember these veterans, remember talking to them. I've had the privilege to talk to a couple of those scouts, uh, both Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, and it's a, it's a real honor and privilege to talk to them because they actually talk to the veterans. Uh, some of them were of the Battle of Gettysburg. And here we have another veteran arriving for the last great Civil War reunion at Gettysburg in 1938. Fascinating photograph. And here we have another slide of the veterans arriving for the 75th anniversary. Notice the wooden ramp that they built so these gentlemen could walk up the ramp and some of them couldn't do steps. As I said, the average age was 94. Uh, one gentleman claimed to be over 100 years old. Uh, and now if we skip ahead to 1976, you see the uh, uh, American Freedom Train. This uh, American Freedom Train traveled the United States for the bicentennial uh, of independence of the United States. And they uh, came to Gettysburg on July 4th. 1976. And there's the train station, as you can see to the upper left. Notice how long the, the train was. It had 10 display cars that visitors could enter and see some historical artifacts of the United States, including an actual copy of the U.S. Constitution that was owned by President George Washington. It had the original uh, 1803 documents from the Louisiana Purchase, and it also had a piece of moon rock that was brought back uh, in 1969 from the moon. So the American Freedom Train had quite a bit of history uh, surrounding it. We could go on and on with many more pictures shared from the archives of the Adams County Historical Society. The Society has a valuable, uh, priceless collection of photographs and stories and artifacts from hundreds of years of Adams County history. And more and more of these uh, photographs uh, that get turned into the uh, society are, are cataloged and uh, made available to, to everyone and preserved for posterity. There are lots more railroad pictures, station pictures, but I don't have time to, to go through all of them. But we hope that this uh, brief overview would whet your appetite for more uh, knowledge about the railroads. We have one last slide. I thought this was a great, a great picture from the Historical Society's collection. We have an unknown veteran waving a last farewell as he leaves Gettysburg for the final time. Uh, he was uh, represents a, a soldier of the Civil War. Uh, following him, there were uh, the train stations uh, saw soldiers depart for World War I and, and up to 1942, uh, World War II as well. The last passenger left the Gettysburg-Lincoln train station in 1942 and no more passengers 
arrived or departed since 1942 at that station. But this gentleman is waving to us as he says his last farewell to Gettysburg. I want to thank you for watching and encourage you to visit the Adams County Historical Society online at this web address that you see here. And browse for yourself over 20,000 photos and records, much more of Adams County history yet to be explored. Thank you. Thank you, Howard, for that lovely presentation. And you've sparked my interest. I have so many questions to ask, but just the one um, that comes to mind, seeing those pictures of Lincoln at the Hanover Junction. From my own reading, I know that Lincoln was a huge railroad fan. Could you, um, do you have any more Lincoln stories about him? Yes, there's there's plenty of Lincoln stories uh, and uh, that connect to the railroads. He he was a a person who liked the technology of the day, and he was very enthusiastic about railroads and the telegraph. He spent much of his time, of course, at the telegraph in Washington D.C. to learn about the Battle of Gettysburg, and for his second term, he had a plan to create a train that would be comparable to what we would call Air Force One today. He was going to uh, establish a train that he could ride across the country, uh, planning to go into the South to reunite the country. Uh, and then the train would have uh, contained the uh, all of the technology from 1864, 1865. But unfortunately, uh, he didn't live to, to see that reality. And the train that he had planned and was uh, creating became his funeral train. And uh, we could even do a whole presentation on the Lincoln funeral train sometime. Uh, but uh, but yes, uh, President Lincoln was a great lover of railroads and believed uh, that there should be a transcontinental railroad to link the, the eastern half of the United States with the uh, United States on the other side of the Mississippi. So uh, Lincoln was a great believer in railroads. Unfortunately, we don't have any pictures of him at the railroad station in Gettysburg. Uh, at least we don't think we do. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, what I'm going to do is cut it off at this point and uh, suggest that we might put another railroad program together for future. Thank you all for listening to our program and thank you for being members of the Adams County Historical Society. Anyone who is interested in donating to the society, the Facebook page has a donate button that is safe and secure if you wish to help us continue these programs. Thank you so much.